Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and uh, I am really excited to play this one. This is the newest from Fantasy Flight Dagger, the Marvel game. Usually I leave the Marvel coverage to uh, Steve with Marvel United and Marvel Legendary, and Peter with Marvel Champions on the streaming channel, but I'm jumping into the fray. I'll be doing a full solo playthrough of this one, and I should have a review in another week or two once I've played the game more. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. Like one I just filmed looks back at my top 20 games from 2019 and lets you know which ones I still feel strongly about. You can also watch our separate streaming channel for even more content, listen to our weekly podcast, or join the conversation on our Discord. So the basic idea of Dagger, and sorry, I'm uh, zooming out as much as I can here. It's a really big map. Uh, you play a variety of Marvel heroes. In this game, I have uh, Carol Danvers as uh, Captain Marvel and T'Challa as Black Panther. And you go against one of four villains. I'm fighting Red Skull. And it's sort of a pandemic-ish style. You're moving around the board, fighting enemies before they can hurt you or blow up your bases. You have five of them uh, scattered around the board. And you're also trying to complete missions, including uh, main missions for your current nemesis. Again, Red Skull in this case. And once you've uh, faced three missions, failing or passing them, then you can actually fight Red Skull. And if you defeat him, you win. But if all five of your bases are destroyed, you lose. If you take too long and run out of event cards, you lose. Uh, once you're actually fighting the nemesis, then if threat gets too high, you lose. So it's basically a race against time to defeat the villain. And the core stuff in the game happens with your character. So you take a combination of a hero or heroine. They've got 20 in the game. It's a ton, although each of them is double-sided. So it's kind of like two variants of the same hero in a way. Like here's two different versions of Captain Marvel, but they can have drastically different health, uh, very different stats for their dice rolling for checks. They each have three different unique abilities. And then they have some support cards and team up cards that are shared, some that are unique to them. So it's 20 unique characters, but they do share some elements amongst themselves. And then on top of that, you combine a character with one of six aspects. In this case, I'm doing aggression for Captain Marvel. It's going to change up your basic actions in some ways, give you an ongoing bonus. As you can imagine with aggression, she likes punching people. So there's a ton of variety in the characters. I actually uh, spent a while kind of <laughs> going through different team options before I picked this one. And with Black Panther, I went with more of a support role. He's in the vigilance aspect, which is uh, mainly going to let him empower himself and other heroes because he has a kinetic blast he can use that is uh, stronger when he's empowered. And then Captain Marvel, when she's empowered, can shoot cosmic beams to blast people. And then there's more variety besides uh, which of the four nemeses you are facing because you also get one of six different sets of enemies. Uh, in this case, I'm doing the time travel set. So I'm facing, uh, they have level one, two, and three enemies, uh, Egyptian warriors, Chachari soldiers. And uh, when Big Mama gets angry, we'll have a T-Rex chasing after us. And they have their own special abilities, their own stats, uh, health, and their damage value. T-Rex just eats you for five. That sounds uh, painful. So yeah, a lot to vary up the experience each time you play, but the core action in the game, besides like uh, drawing events and resolving missions and stuff, is in these uh, action tokens here. So each player has a four in a two-player game, or a solo controlling two, you can't uh, true solo this one. And in higher player count games, you each lose one of the basic ones, but you always have this boosted action and two to three regular ones. And some of the bosses will have action spaces, some of the board spots will have action spaces, but mainly you're putting them on these slots, activating different things. Uh, you'll see most of the basic actions can only be done twice per round. And some actions will have a bonus if you use your boosted token on them. Like for uh, Carol, with her aggression aspect, she can move but also hurt people when she moves if it's boosted. And she can fight with some mitigation and better chance to hit if she does a boosted fight. And with your heroes, this alternates in a little micro turn. So I do a single action, then T'Challa does one, then Carol does one, then T'Challa does one, and so on. And then you resolve a bunch of bad stuff at the end of the turn. We'll see all that as we get into the play. All right, so we always have the same three Red Skull missions, but then we have a random first strike mission on top. And uh, this is where the time travel enemies came from. So you can pick one of the six to determine who you have. It also determines the initial spawns. And spawns are going to be based on number of players. So it's the number of circles. So in a two plus player game, or again in solo, I spawn just a level one, a tier one enemy in space 10. If we had four or more heroes, we would have spawned a level two enemy. And if we had uh, the max of five players in the game, we would have spawned a level three enemy too. And then missions have some stats. There's a lot like Marvel Champions or, I don't know, Eldritch Horror or a lot of other adventure games where this is what you need to succeed. And it's based on player counts. We need one success token, uh, one of these little like progress tokens, these time tokens on here for each player. With two players, we need two. 
And then this is threat. So threat's going to advance at the end of every turn. You'll see that based on several parameters. And uh, if it gets to six or higher at the end of a round, then we'll have failed this mission. Failure and success don't mean you lose the game. It just gives you bonuses or penalties. And also, if we beat this one, we'll get three stars, three team up points, which go on this track to help us activate abilities. And then missions will have different ways to actually put progress on them. Um, in this one's case, and this is true of all the first strike ones, we just got to fight people. So it says when an enemy is defeated, place progress on this mission equal to the power of the enemy. That's their attack stat. And then when it's completed, we're going to spawn a side mission. You'll see what that looks like. And if it's failed, the heroes also choose a base to become overrun. That would be terrible because Red Skull's uh, whole thing is that he's overrunning bases anyway. So we don't want to let that happen. And just to kind of show you the main things as well as I can, you've got four bases that are printed on the board. New York, Atlantis, Wakanda, and Madripoor, uh, each in a different colored region. So Madripoor is in the red, Wakanda in the green. Atlantis is for all of the ocean spots, even though they aren't contiguous, all the blue spots. And New York is for this uh, kind of western spot here. You also have a moving base, the Iliad, which you get to place and then some effects can move later. I put it in Central Europe for this game. And each hero starts in a different base. I've got uh, Carol Danvers in Atlantis and T'Challa in Wakanda. Red Skull starts automatically on a specific space, which is space four. And then to show it, uh, the spawn for the time travel event was a single level one enemy, one of these Egyptian warriors in central Russia. There's also Asgard chilling in the corner. This is not a base and you can't reach it right now, but some effects will allow you to move the Bifrost token. And then basically this becomes adjacent to the Bifrost token. And by resting here, you can move the Bifrost anywhere else by taking a rest action. So it's kind of like a little uh, <laughs> rainbow bridge express to wherever you need to go. And that's going to be, as you can imagine, used a lot more like if Thor is in the game or if you're fighting against Loki. Not sure how much it'll come into play with Red Skull. All right, our boy T'Challa is in his vigilance aspect. Let's talk about his powers and stuff going on and kind of what's going on with the hero in general. So he's got his health stat over here. If he takes five or more damage, he will be defeated. Uh, the first time that happens, you flip him over and you get the alter ego of this person, which in this case would be a Shuri as Black Panther. But if a hero gets defeated a second time, then uh, you're just out of the game. And basically the players get like one more round to try to win. Probably won't happen. So let's not make that uh, occur. Then you've got three stats. Attacking is for attacking. This is how many dice you roll, by the way. Uh, DFI is your defiance. That's uh, used mainly for uh, completing quests. And then TAC is your tactical. That's used for like special effects. And then also for the rest action to heal and charge up your support cards. Each character has three special abilities. Uh, here we've got, oh gosh, the Dora Milaje. Sorry, I'm not a huge Marvel fan like some of the other people on the channel. So if that's something I should know about, I'm sorry. But it says during your attribute test, double the number of wild results you roll. So each die has, uh, it's an eight-sided die, has one wild side, a little lightning bolt. So he's going to double those, which is pretty great if he gets lucky. Then this one is actually an action, so I'd have to put one of my tokens on here to use it, but it says King of Wakanda. Perform your defy action, this regular one over here, but you can reroll any number of dice. So he's already pretty good at defiance with three dice, but there's like a little boosted defiance, which means he could also defy three times in a round. He's uh, great at solving problems. And then finally, this one, again, does not have a circle, so it's kind of like an ongoing effect. But the fact that it says empowered here means he needs to have an empowered token which look like these, uh, he can give them to people with his rest action, as you'll see later in Vigilance. That's why I picked it. Also, I think this support card, yeah, Panther Habit, can give him uh, Empowered as well. And when a character has a power like this, you can't use it unless you can discard the token indicated. So in this case, he can do a Kinetic Blast by discarding an Empowered token, and it's going to double his successes in a fight action. Now, he's not great at fighting yet, so <laughs> I don't know if I'll use that necessarily, but it's still pretty cool. And then each character has two support cards that are shared amongst uh, them and like their alter ego. So Shuri and T'Challa have this. You get to pick one to start face up, but they have a number of uh, charges indicated on the back. And the rest action generally is going to give you charges as well as other effects. And if you put charge tokens on here until you reach this amount, then you get to flip it and use it again. So these are going to kind of go between a charge and uncharged state. So his two are Strength of Wakanda, which I started with because it's more expensive. I figured that made sense. And it says, before you roll dice, exhaust this to roll one additional die. Pretty cheap, though. It's only two. And then Panther Habit is only one. It says, after you suffer damage, you may exhaust this card to become empowered. That's, uh, again, that little empowered thing. And then he also shares with Shuri the Wakanda Forever Team Up card. And basically, you'll build a team up uh, points by completing side missions and doing some other things, including using any of your combo abilities like Kinetic Blast here. And then you can spend this at any time to flip it and then use it whenever you want. Uh, this one, Wakanda Forever, you may exhaust this card to empower each hero. So like I said, a lot of empowering going on. 
And then each character has a unique mission, which you can choose to put into play when you take a certain action. We'll see it later. I, I think I might actually do this one right away because it kind of fits what we're trying to do. So uh, T'Challa's is trial by combat. He needs to get nine progress to beat it. And in this case, he gets progress by damaging the minion or sorry, the nemesis by uh, beating up Red Skull. And that could be him or Carol Dammers, which is uh, what I'm about to do. And then when he completes it, he gets his unique ongoing upgrade, never goes away, Vibranium Energy Blade, which is going to let him fight with three dice instead of two, as long as he's empowered, which you can uh, probably see will be a very nice combo with his Kinetic Blast that double his successes. But it also comes with a negative. In this case, some of the event cards are going to have this little like cycling uh, resolve effects uh, symbol here. And it says the non-nemesis enemy nearest to T'Challa moves to his space. So since he's trying to fight in combat, uh, he's going to have people coming after him. So yeah, I can put that down. And then finally, <laughs> sorry, I know it's a lot, but we don't have to go through all of this later. Uh, vigilance. So the basic actions are move. Usually you'll move one space. Fight, usually you'll just roll your number of attack dice. Defy, if you can defy a mission, which remember right now, the only mission we have is to fight, not to defy. But if you're on the right space, you can do a defy action rolling this. And then finally, rest, you roll your tactics and you get some free successes. For most people, it's only one. And each success can either take away a damage or put one of the charge tokens on your cards, flipping it once you have enough to uh, meet its requirements. So those are the basic actions. Now for T'Challa, his move is two instead of one, so he can go really fast. And if he boosts it, uh, it's three, and then another hero can also move one. So he kind of gets four move for the price of one with the boosted action. He has nothing special for his fight and defy. And for his rest, he still only adds one success and still only recovers her charges. But if he does a boost, he gets to empower one hero, boosting himself or Carol Danvers. Or he can prime one enemy, which basically uh, gives you a plus one damage to an enemy when you attack them if you discard the token. And then his ongoing ability, Vigilance. When you spend your boosted aspect token, advance team up by one which is the track I mentioned here. So he's going to consistently, every single round, be pushing this up to let uh, him use Wakanda forever or to let Carol use her ability. And sure, with the hey, let's meet Carol too. <laughs> so she's got seven health, more than T'Challa. Uh, she's more focused on attacking, but not as good at defiance. Her special is Cosmic Strength. She has an extra attack die while threat is 10 or higher, which is only going to be later on in the game, but uh, she, she brings it when it counts. Her empowered ability, Cosmic Beam, if she takes an action, uh, she'll build one team up for the combo. And she discards the Empowered to choose a nearby space, dealing two damage to each enemy in that space. Nearby means your own space or one adjacent. So if we can get like a bunch of people in the same spot, that would be amazing. And then Cosmic Power, whenever she suffers damage from an event, she can prevent any amount of that damage, only events, not from attacks. But then she has to advance threat by the same amount. So, you know, that's maybe not going to be great, but in a pinch, if she's going to die, that could be good. Her two supports, I'm starting with Energy Absorption. This one says when you would suffer any amount of damage, you may exhaust this card to recover that amount instead. So if she gets like hit, like, wow, if that, uh, <laughs> if the T-Rex came for her and was going to eat her for five, she would heal for five instead. But that one costs three, more expensive than any of T'Challa's. And then her two one is Supersonic Flight. When you move, you may exhaust this card to increase the move value by three. So she can really book it if she wants to. And then her team up is Alpha Flight for four team up points. She can flip it and exhaust this card to prime each enemy. So really a nice kind of compliment to T'Challa's. His uh, boost by all the heroes. Uh, hers weakens all the enemies. Her unique mission is Lost Memories. Um, and if she rolls a wild on any result, then she completes the mission. So it could take her forever. It could be like the very next turn. And then she gets a sword for the rest of the game. But while it's active, all of her hero abilities are blank. So she doesn't get any of this stuff. And then sword is pretty great whenever she fights a nemesis specific enemy. This little like kind of a cross symbol here, which uh, for Red Skull are these exosuit uh, Hydra soldiers. Then she gets an extra die. Also when she fights Red Skull himself. So she could be rolling like five dice <laughs> if she wants to. Now, speaking of the enemies, we've got the Egyptian warriors. Um, whenever they attack someone or are attacked by someone, we lose one team up. But they only have two health. Two attack, though, is actually pretty bad for a basic enemy. But two health isn't hard. Two defeat. Chitauri soldiers have five health. And uh, after they activate, they deal one damage to the nearest hero. So they're just going to, like, shoot us from across the board. The T-Rex is interesting. Uh, he reduces all damage he's dealt by one, so and he has nine health. <laughs> and when he moves, he moves towards the nearest hero. You're going to see when enemies activate, they tend to move towards uh, bases and try to overrun them. Basically, if they're in a spot by themselves, uh, they'll attack a hero first. You can guard a base, but otherwise they'll just overrun it. But the T-Rex, we can kind of lead on a merry chase if we would really like to. And then Red Skulls guys, Hydra, EXO, EXO soldiers, uh, four health, two attack. And they're also hunting us down. So this is kind of a hunty uh, hero mission <laughs> with this combo. When a Hydra, EXO soldier moves, 
It moves two spaces toward the hero with the highest attack stat, which is basically always going to be Captain Marvel, um, instead of trying to get to bases. So that's two of the four enemies who care more about killing us. But that's okay, because Red Skull, like I said, is all about uh, fighting bases and overrunning them. So this is his uh, threat value. He's going to automatically advance threat by two every turn, which is actually the lowest of all the nemeses, I think. He's also got uh, four health, which is, again, pretty low for nemeses. Now, on this side, you're not really fighting him. You're just, like, kind of slowing him down. So if you deal four damage to him, then he just gets stunned and won't, like, take his regular activation for the turn. And then he does two damage. And then these are going to come up when we draw event cards. Basically, these ones, he'll what he'll usually do, will move him towards a base. And if he gets to it, he overruns it. And then he gets progress tokens, which are going to uh, do damage to all of us with Dust of Death. If we get defeated by Dust of Death, we don't actually die. We just heal one, and then he advances threat. But basically, he's going to be like poisoning us a ton. And then we can actually go into his space to remove the tokens he gets from like events and missions and from his uh, science effect. So we'll see how it goes. I've uh, so far played against Loki for two games. This is my first one against Red Skull. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll just <laughs> try to defeat him. But with all that preamble, let's get to the actual first turn. And I'm actually going to do nothing on the board because I want Kara to go punch Red Skull and stun him. And that'll also beat the mission. So each of the bases has a little dagger space action you can do. So I'm going to have uh, T'Challa do that one. And you get to do two things when you put your action there. You get to resolve this effect, which you also get for free whenever you're in any region matching the base. So any green region for Wakanda. And you roll lightning bolts, wild symbols. So here I get to empower one hero, T'Challa or Carol. And since Carol's the one who's going to be punching Red Skull, let's empower her. Now, but here's a more important reason that I decided to do the dagger action. When a hero takes the dagger action out of space, they can also, if they haven't yet, put out their personal mission, which goes down here. You can only have one active at a time, so until we complete trial by combat, uh, Captain Marvel can't do hers. And just to remind you, every damage we do to Red Skull is going to put one progress on this. Once it has nine, it'll be completed, and T'Challa will get his uh, energy blades. But it could also potentially have uh, that Egyptian warrior or somebody else teleporting straight to T'Challa to fight him. Okay, then Carol is next, and uh, Red Skull is two spaces away. So let's let's actually boost right away her... Oh, I didn't say, by the way, her aggression aspect gives her plus one to fight actions. Her move, when it's boosted, she moves two instead of one. And every space she moves to or from, she deals one uh, damage to each enemy there. And her boosted attack just means that she hits on attack results too. So she hits on almost every face of the die. But yes, yeah, so I want her to go right there and also hit the guy right away. So she's going to fly to Red Skull to do one damage. So flame on. I know that's not uh, Captain Marvel, but I don't know what she says when she flies. <laughs> so it's one damage to old red here and one progress out of nine on trial by combat. All right, back to the child. It's never good to leave enemies on the board. So let's go ahead and move. He moves too. He's not boosting it so he doesn't get the bonus movement. And even though he's not the main fighter like Carol is, he can still hopefully take down a basic guy. Speaking of Carol, anybody say it's clobbering time? I think it is. So this is just a basic fight. She's not getting the uh, bonus here, but she does add one success to each of her fight actions. So she's rolling three dice plus one automatic damage against Red Skull. And to briefly talk through the dice for those who like to really like, work out to probabilities, three of the eight faces have the attack symbol as kind of like a little blast one here. One of them being a double attack. So that's one, two, three. And then there's always a wild. Uh, so you have a 50% chance on each die of getting some hits, and it could be a double when you attack. And then for defiance, when you're trying to uh, complete quests, uh, missions, then there's a one and a two side plus the wild. So only three out of eight faces, but one of them is a double again. And then the worst one is this little like electric blasty thingy. <laughs> That's for the tactical results, which again is mostly for resting. There's only two faces, each single uh, plus the wild. So a three out of eight chance for each die. Although the rest action will give you, as I noted, uh, free successes, so it's not as bad. All right, so she's rolling three dice looking for those blasts or even better, uh, the lightning bolts. Let's see how it goes. And Ooh, that was a pretty good result. <laughs> so she's got a wild. Uh, so we get to do one hit plus the dagger result in a second. We'll look at that. And she's got a regular hit and her aspect gave her a third. So that's three more damage to Red Skull. So boom, there we go. And we have... Uh, reached his health capacity, which does mean he still counts as being quote unquote defeated, uh, even though he's going to be right back in a second. So he is in this case stunned. And that's important because our first uh, mission say when an enemy is defeated, place progress on this mission equal to its power. Red Skull's power is two. So we've already got two progress, which is more than enough to beat this mission. Now for the main uh, first strike and nemesis missions, you don't resolve them even when you get all the stuff you need. We'll look at that when we get into the nemesis phase. 
But for side missions, you do complete them. Oh, crud! Ah, sorry! <laughs> I totally forgot an important part of setup. You're supposed to start with a side mission. Oh, man. Baron Zemo is out? Uh, okay, so he's got four health. Uh, so some of the side missions are, like, things you can defy. Some of them are just special enemies. So after Baron Zemo activates, if there are no heroes in his space, discard one times the number of players' progress for the non-nemesis mission that has the most progress. Which is currently... Oh, I guess actually that would affect T'Challa, so that would be annoying. All right, so where is he? Space 9? Let's uh, find him. Yeah, great. I'm sorry, y'all. I should have... Okay, well, this definitely makes sense. T'Challa's <laughs> gonna fight uh, Baron Zemo instead of the little basic minion there. Yeah, so if we defeat him by dealing four damage to him, then we'll also get two team-up points. And wait, wait, too much stuff going on at once. I forgot that whenever you roll Lightning Bolt, you get to resolve the dagger effect of the base in your region, unless it's been overrun, like by Red Skull. So for New York, uh, where Carol is, it is gain one team-up. So we're at one, and both uh, T'Challa's Wakanda Forever and Carol's Alpha Flight require four, and you can spend that at any time to flip them over. And also, because she wailed on Red Skull for three more damage, uh, she's got that. And you can keep on, by the way, hitting the uh, Nemesis and adding damage to them, so she could keep on building up Trial by Combat. But once you've stunned them, uh, no extra damage like really means anything except for something like a mission like this, so it's usually not worth it. Also, another optional thing, when you stun the Nemesis, you can move them one space, usually to get them away from a base that they're about to uh, try to overrun. But since I want her to punch him more, there's no need for that. Okay, sorry, I forgot some steps. <laughs> so that was a lot. What do I want to do now? So uh, T'Challa could punch Baron Zemo right now. Uh, so he'd be rolling two dice. I could use Strength of Wakanda to make it three. But what I'm kind of thinking is maybe I rest first um, using my boosted die to empower myself. And then I could attack him for my last action with Strength of Wakanda. His attack would go up to three. And if he rolled well, I could double the number of successes. That's probably his best chance of dealing four to Zemo. So yeah, we're going to do that for his next action. So he's going to actually I'm not even going to test tactics <laughs> because uh, he would get two for each success including the one free one, apart from his uh, result. He would get to recover one damage or charge one, but literally only has a single thing that can be charged. So he'll go in and charge up Panther Habit. But then he gets to empower one here or prime one enemy, and he's definitely going to empower himself. And for empowering again, uh, after you roll, so it is after you roll, you can discard it to get plus one success. That's to any type of effect. But also for him, after he rolls during a fight, he can discard it to do the empowered, get plus one team up and double his... Oh, speaking of team up, every time he advances or uses his boost, he gets one team up. So we're at two and it could be going to three or four in a second. All right, back to Carol. And yeah, it's not really helping that much, but she wants to get her boy T'Challa all trialed up. So let's fight uh, Red Skull again. And she's still getting the plus one automatic success from her aspect. Whoa, okay. Three more. Nice job, Carol. So we put three damage on him, although it does not matter. But more importantly, now we've got... Uh, seven out of nine. Ooh, she could. I mean, it seems like kind of a waste, but she could just cosmic beam to get this thing done immediately. But first, T'Challa does not like Baron Zemo. I forget if in the comics he blew up his dad, but he certainly uh, helped to make that happen in uh, the movies, right? Is that what happened? <laughs> I'm going to use uh, Strength of Wakanda before I roll to make it three attack, and I can discard this for plus one damage, or I can discard and use Kinetic Blast to double my damage which is, of course, what I uh, hope will be the right thing to do, because I hope I roll some hits. Okay, so here we go. Come on, give me some hits. Ah, there we go. Okay, two. So doubling would be the best, right? See, so yeah, I'll use Kinetic Blast to double my hits, so I'm doing four, defeating Zemo right off the bat. That's awesome. Now, whenever you use a combo ability, you'll see the little plus star here. You get one team up. So blip. And then also... Expert marksman, expert swordman, expert strategist. Yeah, apparently not expert enough, Baron Zemo. I punch you in one shot. <laughs> we also get this much team up. So that's five. So we're already ready to use either Wakanda Forever or Alpha Flight uh, to boost ourselves up, which seems great. And then Carol doesn't want uh, T'Challa to have all the comboing fun. So she's going to Cosmic Beam. It does take an action. She has to discard her Empowered. She chooses a nearby space, which is the space she's in, and she's going to deal two damage to each enemy in that space. A little bit of a waste, but we do get the plus one team up, bringing us to six. And the big thing is that does two more damage to Red Skull. And guess what? Trial by combat. I mean, it wasn't... I, I guess, you know, T'Challa still had some trial, right? He, he trialed against uh, Zemo pretty hard. <laughs> but we have now completed this because it's not a Nemesis uh, mission. It's immediately completed. There is no team-up bonus for this. But T'Challa unlocks Vibranium Energy Blades. But now the spot is open for Carol to tragically lose her memory in a future turn if she'd like to. 
Just to show you energy blades again, they're pretty sweet. When you perform a fight action, if you are empowered, roll one additional die. So T'Challa will have basically three attack as long as he stays empowered. And if I get Strength of Wakanda back, he could have four attack and double it. Oh man, he's, he's actually not too bad. Not as strong as Captain Marvel, but pretty darn good. And because we've each done all of our actions, in this case four, we're going to go to the Nemesis phase. We're going to advance threat, check if we've uh, won or lost the Nemesis mission, which we know we have. And then we're going to resolve the event card. That's the like major part of the Nemesis phase. And yeah, we'll go from there. So the threat track, it's advanced by several things. Most importantly is the core value on the Nemesis. Again, Red Skulls is two, the lowest of any of them. Next, for each living enemy besides Red Skull, in this case, just the Egyptian warrior is going to advance by one. And if any of the bases had been overrun, it's going to advance by one. So another reason to keep Red Skull from doing that. And finally, we haven't seen one like this yet, but uh, if there was a side mission, a lot of them will have extra threat advancement. So in this case, it's just two for Red Skull, plus one for the Egyptian warrior. It doesn't matter because we've already beat the mission. But let's say that we hadn't beat the mission yet and it advanced again, but you don't lose the mission immediately. If you have the right number of progress on the mission when you get to the next step in the Nemesis phase where you uh, check the Nemesis mission, your success takes precedence over failure. So even if they had gone to six threat in the same turn that we got to these two progress tokens, what we need, we would still complete the mission. So next we do check. We have... One, two progress for one, two players. Oh, I guess we actually got more, didn't we? Because we also had uh, <laughs> two from Baron Zemo. When this mission is complete, spawn a side mission. Let's do that first. And okay, this time it is not an enemy one. Stand as one. Oh, this is going to be so easy. <laughs> After a hero resolves a combo ability, that's uh, the kinetic blast and the cosmic beam we just did, place one progress on this mission. When we come together, we're stronger than when we stand apart. That's what it's always been about. Luke Cage, you're not in this game, are you? <laughs> I mean, Daredevil Electra are, but I haven't seen you, buddy. All right, so that stand is one. We don't have to put the green token out anywhere because this is just a generic one. We actually can't defy anything yet. And here's an example. This would advance threat by an extra one in future threat phases if we haven't solved it. Okay, then additionally, we're going to get, oh my gosh, so much team up. We are team up masters. And when this, uh, and if the mission was failed, the heroes also choose one base to become overrun. Oh, sorry, I didn't read the flavor text. You must fight for your future and for all possible futures. Yeah, by the way, if you were coming for like long, fun, crazy narratives like Eldritch Horror, I've heard the game compared to Eldritch Horror in like the lead up. This is not Eldritch Horror like Marvel style or Eldritch Horror 2.0. There is like none of that <laughs> story based encounter stuff. There's a lot of other things that are kind of similar, but I wouldn't call this that similar Eldritch or Arkham uh, Horror. But okay, so we don't have the failed effect. So all we do is we're just going to trash this from the game and we're going to get into the first Red Skull mission. So these are more involved, as you can imagine. They tend to have a higher threat value to beat them. Uh, they actually have things to defy. So we're going to get to use that defy stat. And the big thing is whenever you beat them, it's a sort of a fail forward system. So you don't lose or win because you beat them. But if you beat them, you get to unlock bonuses that'll make Red Skull weaker. And if you lose to them, you unlock stuff that makes Red Skull harder in the final battle. So it kind of affects how things go. And before I do that, by the way, let's get, oh my gosh. So I can get both of our team ups. I can prime every enemy on the board and also empower both of us to use our combos again to beat the stand as one mission. Let's go, man. We are going to beat up everybody. But yes, the next mission, Sands of Time. How fleeting are the years? How immovable is the hatred? Red Skull, I'm trying to do my best Jason as like Skeletor impression. <laughs> So uh, you can only defy this mission in West Africa, which T'Challa is next to, and he's the defiance boy. Let's go uh, place one progress on this mission for each success. That's how it always works. Ooh, but if you roll no successes, place a progress token on the nemesis sheet. That's going to uh, boost Red Skull's poison from dust of death. So, okay, you don't want to roll badly with that one. And we need six successes total to uh, advance to the next phase of the game. Again, you got to do all three of these before you fight Red Skull, before we hit 14 threat. And they have a token for each of the missions to show where it is. So that's reminding us that we have to do that in West Africa. Okay, next, the main part of the Nemesis phase, we're going to draw an event and resolve a bunch of stuff from it. The event deck is always made up of nine random cards from the basic set. I think there's like 30 total, so a lot of variety there. And then within each of the sets of three random cards, you're shuffling in one villain uh, Nemesis specific one. So we've got four cards, one being for Red Skull specifically, four more, four more. And this is a timer for the game. So you're going to flip one of these each round. If you have not won by the 13th round, when you would have to flip one and the deck is empty, you lose. Okay, But in this one, brutal attack. Agent, do you copy? Repeat, do you copy? Medical team, deploy to their location ASAP. 
Okay, one hero suffers three damage. Let's do that first. And yeah, I think with Carol having uh, seven life instead of five, like T'Challa, and energy absorption, remember when she would take damage, she can heal that much instead. She'll take the three for now, and then the next time she gets hit, she'll just hopefully heal it back. Okay, next, after resolving the effect here, we're going to do the stuff down here. This means we look at each uh, mission in play, and also like enemies will have these sometimes and resolve their effects. Currently, there is nothing, <laughs> so that one doesn't do anything. But then this is going to go to Red Skull. It's a little fireball. Let's see what it says. And yeah, he has the same one for both potion, or not potion, uh, what is that? <laughs> like flask and fireball. It's profane science. Super important one, like the most important one, I think, to keep in mind for him. Red Skull moves one space toward the nearest operational base, then if he's on the base, he overruns it and places two progress tokens on this sheet, which is going to boost Dust of Death. Otherwise, place one progress token on the sheet. Now, this is really nasty. Nastier than you know, he is gunning for our bases because usually for a base to be overrun, the enemy has to already be on there, like at the end of your turn. You need to have left them there because then what will happen is uh, first they prefer to attack you if they're in your space when they activate. Then they prefer to overrun a base. So you can protect a base if you're there. They'll attack you instead of overrunning it. And then finally, if they can't attack you and they can't overrun our base, they'll move towards the closest base. That's why the uh, the T-Rex and the uh, Hydra Exo Soldier are different because they chase after you instead of the bases. But yeah, here he just moves and if he gets far enough, he overruns the base immediately, which is a, a nightmare. <laughs> But luckily, he didn't reach Atlantis, and if Carol goes and punches him some more, which is probably her plan, then uh, I'll get to move him one and get him farther away again. But because he is frustrated that he didn't blow us up, he gets some progress on his dust of death. Oh, wait, crap. Did I do this? Oh, I did this totally wrong. Never mind. He's dust of destiny. If everything I just said is wrong, because that's a fireball, Mike, and that's a bomb. <laughs> Okay, get out of here, get out of here. So, what do we do instead? Each hero suffers one damage, plus one damage for each progress token on the sheet. Well, it seems like this is definitely the right time for this to happen. Uh, then remove one progress token from the sheet. And if this causes a hero to have damage equal to their health, they are not defeated, they recover one, and the threat advances by two. So he can't kill us with this, but he can certainly get us close to death. All right, so it's not too bad. Carol's at four out of seven, but she has her energy absorption ready to help herself. And uh, T'Challa's at one out of five. I could exhaust this to use Panther Habit and become empowered, but I think I'm about to use Wakanda forever and empower both of them anyway, so let's not waste it yet. Okay, next, enemies activate. That happens for every event card. You don't need to check for an icon, but it's a little reminder here. And then you spawn enemies. So it's kind of like boop, boop, you know, if you want to <laughs> chart the uh, progress of event turn. So enemies activate in strength order, first rank one, then two, and then three, and then the special ones for the nemesis, the exo soldiers, and then elite enemies like uh, Baron Zemo, and then finally the nemesis himself. So again, if this guy was on a base, he would overrun it. If he was in a hero space, he would attack. But in this case, he's just going to move, and he wants to go to the nearest base in the same colored region as him, which currently is the Iliad and Wakanda. Either way, he's going to say hello to T'Challa, and T'Challa is going to say hello claws in your face. At least that's my hope. And then Red Skull, since he's in a space with Carol, would normally attack because... Uh, uh, that's the first preference. But instead, since he's stunned, he discards all damage and he's not stunned, but she's going to make sure that he is again, I think. And finally, after activation, we spawn enemies. So they don't activate. Important to note. And there's usually going to be one for two and then like four and five, like here. So here they're all enemy specific. So on space six, we're going to get one of Zemo's exo soldiers. Oh, no. I was like, where's space six? Unfortunately, that's where I put the Iliad. <laughs> so that guy's going to overrun it unless I do something about it. Remember when he would move, he moves two towards the hero with the most attack. But it's only if he would move. If he's on a base, he'll still overrun the base. If he's in a space with us, he'll still attack us. Can Black Panther kill him by himself? Uh, maybe he can. I was going to go deal with the West Africa thing, but I don't know if I have time anymore. Right, but that is the end of the enemy phase. We get all our aspect tokens back, including a T'Challa on the board. First player token passes, so Captain Danvers will be first. And that is one round down. Let's take in the state of the board real quick. Carol's hanging out with Red Skull, who just poisoned us. T'Challa's uh, covered in enemies, and he's not the better fighter out of the group. And then uh, Red Skull's uh, special event is over here, Sands of Time. And then we've got an ongoing uh, mission to just use some combo abilities if we can. So first things first, I am here in time for a team up. Let's do both of them. Wakanda forever! Alpha flight, go! So uh, that's four each. That's why we went down to uh, one. And that means we're going to exhaust right away to empower each of us. And we're going to put a prime token on each enemy. And prime tokens hang out with the enemy. And anytime you fight them, you can discard the token to get plus one success. And hopefully, combined with T'Challa's bonus abilities, that'll be enough. Oh, sorry, something incredibly important I forgot to mention. Uh, the new mission uh, is going to fail on when a 14 is the threat. 
But also this resets to zero after each mission, whether you succeed or fail at it. So you don't like suffer from letting the threat build up. So I could just blast Red Skull for two, but let's let's do a basic fight first. I don't want to use my boost one because I might try to like move her. I might even try to rest and unlock supersonic flight to move plus three, and then she can just fly all over the earth. So she's doing a basic three attack, but she gets plus one automatically from her aspect. She can discard that to get plus one on Red Skull. She can discard um, her Empowered to get plus one. So she can do a lot of damage if she wants to. Ooh, and that's good. So that's already two, three with her bonus from her aspect. Let's discard this to make it four, but keep her Empowered uh, to maybe use her Cosmic Beam and complete the mission later. So no bonus this time. We're just stopping Red Skull from uh, moving too far. But there's not much sense in moving him anywhere, because no matter where I move him, he's still within two of some base. Like, uh, I don't think there's any corner you can put him in that would make it worse than that. I guess unless we get the, like, rainbow bridge down and just send him to Asgard. Uh, but no, right now, <laughs> we'll leave him where he is. And let's see, now it's T'Challa's turn. And before he leaves, I think we should kill that Chitari guy, right? So let's fight... Uh, he's got a weakness token on him, and because of Vibranium Energy Blades and T'Challa being empowered, I'm going to roll three dice. I only need to get one hit, because then the, uh, the, what's it call it? <laughs> the, what is it? Oh, the, the Prime. The Prime effect will do the extra damage. You gotta love unlocking those Vibranium Blades early. Okay, there we go. That's all we needed. One. So we do defeat him, but unfortunately his ability is going to knock down the team-up track by one. And I go back to Carol. Hmm. I'd kind of like to get her to a base, maybe like Atlantis. She can get out her uh, unique mission to hopefully unlock her special power. And then also, ooh, this one lets her recover or charge so she could uh, heal, which is certainly good since she got her butt kicked a little bit. Because I think T'Challa should be able to kill that guy. And then we can worry about the mission next turn, theoretically. All right, so sure. Let's go ahead and use her boost so she can move two instead of one. And she can deal a damage as she ditches Red Claw, which uh, unfortunately, or not Red Claw, Red Skull, <laughs> which unfortunately is not going to matter. And then she can use that next turn. All right, meanwhile, T'Challa will move up to two, normal. Getting in here. So now, even uh, if we don't defeat this guy, he'll attack T'Challa for his attack value of two instead of overrunning the Iliad. Okay, then Carol, as planned, is going to do the dagger uh, action here. So she gets to put down her unique mission and she can recover to or charge to. Charge 2 would let her unlock her super flight, but no, I just want to not be dead. So let's get her back down to 2 damage, and then her energy absorption should theoretically be able to heal the rest at some point. And she's going to get lost memories. So all of her hero abilities are treated as if they're blank, which means, oh, she can't use her cosmic beam to complete the mission. Well, I don't think she was going to do that this turn anyway. But anytime she rolls a wild on any test, which, I mean, she can, like, rest in a second to try to do that, she will get rid of this and get her sword to give her plus one attack against Red Skull and his baddies for the rest of the game. Speaking of baddies, let's, uh, let's fight. <laughs> let's fight the guy that is on T'Challa. So, hmm, he's got three dice because of Vibranium Energy Blades. And then if he uses this to fire off Kinetic Blast, he's going to get us closer to the mission, and he's going to double his number of successes. That sounds great to me. Let's let's try to make that happen. All right, here we go. Oh, and I got plus one more from that. This might be overkill. Ooh, not overkill. Not really, I guess, right? Yeah, so that would give me plus one. And then I could just use the basic empowered to deal another one. But no, nah, we're not going to do that. We're going to use the power. By the way, you're dead. And yeah, using the kinetic blast doubles my uh, successes to four. Since it's a combo, we're up on the team up track. And since the combo, we got half of our stand as one completed, although we are going to get the negative uh, threat increase from that. All right, for Carol's last action, she could move to the Defiance place or move back towards Red Skull, but I want her to try to rest. And if she gets lucky and rolls a exclamation point, which is not, probably not going to happen, that'd be cool. But yeah, so she's going to roll her two dice, looking for those very elusive uh, tactical symbols. She gets one free success, and she can split these among uh, unlocking her supersonic flight and healing her remaining two damage. All right, so I don't have very high hopes here. Oh, yes, 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 okay, okay, cool. Oh, that's actually more than I wanted. Uh, so that's two successes, but and then I also get to activate the dagger effect, but then also she gets her freaking memory back. <laughs> By the way, my, my wife and I, when we played, she could not roll a success to save her life. <laughs> so I'm going to have to, like, apologize to her for rolling really well. All right, so Jesus, this is going to be way too much. She's got charge two or recover two from Atlantis, so I guess she'll heal two. And then she gets a free success plus the two she rolled. So she gets to charge up to three. So, whoops, uh, she'll get supersonic flight ready. But then again, she like 
had the shortest amnesia ever, she's immediately going to get sword, which again is giving her plus one die in attacking uh, both the nemesis specific exo soldiers and also against Red Skull. So she's rolling four dice against Red Skull now. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the, the last two plays were not this did not go this well. <laughs> I promise you. And then to finish things up, yeah, let's have T'Challa do the same basic thing. He's going to rest. Uh, because he's doing the boost, he can empower one hero or prime one enemy. He's just going to go ahead and empower himself since she's still uh, empowered. And yeah, he's got one automatic success plus whatever he rolls on two. I don't think it'll be as good as what Carol rolled. Nope. The zero that we usually expect <laughs> with uh, the rest action. All right, so he's got a single success. Do I want to heal his one damage? Now nah, let's start building back up to his plus one die. Because I love the idea of tying that with Vibranium to do like crazy damage. All right, now we get to the enemy phase. And the threat is pretty basic. Um, only Red Skull's on the board. Nothing's overrun yet. We've done a good job of managing that so far. So we just get the basic two. Then we definitely don't have six uh, progress on Sands of Time. And we definitely don't have 14 threats. So no Nemesis mission shenanigans. We do still get an event. Minor setback. Auxiliary forces have been delayed. Support is on the way, but you'll have to continue alone. Ooh, each hero discards all progress tokens from their support cards. Well, luckily that's just, I wish I'd healed now, T'Challa's one. Um, ooh, we got a new side mission. And then he's, this time he is going to advance toward a base. And then we'll spawn another one of his exo soldiers in a second. But let's do these in order. So first, a new side mission. Let's, oh, it's another enemy. Yon Rog. Uh, Yon Rog's Cree physiology, coupled with his extensive combat training, made him a formidable foe. Was he? Was that Jude Law in the movie? Sorry, I haven't read the Marvel comics in a billion years, and I was always more of an X-Man person anyway. But either way, it seems uh, appropriate this is uh, Carol Danvers fighting him, just like, uh, hey, we got uh, we got Baron Zemo for uh, T'Challa. So wait, after he damages a hero, they lose him power. He's got four damage? I mean, gosh, we can never let him actually hit us, right? Ooh, he's in Central America, right next to Carol. Hmm. All right, well, let's put him down. Oh, we all just going to be having a fun time in the Americas. Okay, next, for real this time, is uh, Red Skull's little ability here. So he moves one towards the base. He doesn't reach it, so he can't overrun it. Although, man, if we don't punch him away, he'll definitely get it next time. And he adds a single progress token. So uh, if he does Dust of Death, he'll do two damage to each of us. And by the way, there is the sabotage ability you can take if you're on a space. You test tactics. If you get at least one success, which we've seen both our guys uh, might struggle with, <laughs> then you remove two progress tokens from this and an additional for each wild shown. So if he just builds up a ton, you can try to get rid of it. Although one goes away when he uses Dust of Death. So if he only has one token on, if it's worth it. Okay, uh, enemies activate. Only one at the moment is... Oh, cool. Let's come right to her, man. She'll she'll punch you for free, I promise. Uh, but Red Skull is stunned, so he does not advance to the base yet. And then we're doing another Exo Warrior on 11. Hopefully it's not a base this time. Ooh, this is actually good. It's South Asia. And remember, he, instead of uh, moving towards bases, moves two towards the person with the most attack, which is definitely Carol, which I think would mean uh, probably the fastest way to reach her would be boop, boop, boop. So he wouldn't even be threatening a base after this turn. So besides the increased threat, we'll probably won't worry about him. All right, so going into round three, we've already completed both of our <laughs> character-specific uh, missions. Awesome. Uh, Carol is in Atlantis, ready to stop Yon Rog from conquering it. It'd be great if she could also stun Red Skull away, but that's a lot of damage to ask uh, one Captain Marvel to deal. We've got an Exo Soldier hanging out over here. T'Challa would love to go into West Africa and start solving the Sands of Time mission, but he might need to help fight. Maybe we just let a base fall. I don't know. Well, maybe, hmm, maybe we have T'Challa go a little wild for his first action and do a move into Atlantis. Because again, like, well, I guess he doesn't have um, his support card to get plus one die. We're rolling three dice because of a vibranium energy blades and being able to double it. He has a decent chance of just taking this guy down on his own, right? And to that end, I don't know if this is the right call, but let's even do his boosted moves. Then he can move three if he wants to. He doesn't, but he can also move another hero one and save Carol a whole extra action in trying to stun and push Red to Skull away. And then worst case, she could use her cosmic beam to shoot this guy if Child doesn't do enough damage. Okay, so I'm feeling good about that. Okay, then Carol's going to do... This should be enough. <laughs> she's going to do a boosted fight. So she's going to hit on the tactical symbols as well, which means she's literally hitting on six out of eight die faces, including a double uh, face. And because of Alpha Flight, she's going to roll four dice... Oh, sorry, not because of Alpha Flight, because of Sword, she's going to roll four dice against Red Skull instead of three. She can throw this away if she needs to do an extra damage. I feel pretty good about that. All right, so here she goes. 
Okay, that worked out great. Oh, and she gets plus one from her aspect, I forgot. So yeah, that didn't work. But because of her boost, those hit. So one, two, three, four, plus one from her aspect. More than enough to stun him. Which, remember, doesn't uh, stop him from using all these abilities, but does stop him from his own internal like movement and attack and all that. And most importantly, this time she will push him away. Uh, now he's two away from Atlantis, so unless he gets like an event, which I think probably do exist, that has like double flask bombs to get him straight there. Uh, hopefully we'll be safe from that. All right, but now T'Challa's going to do a fight. And since he's empowered, he's got three dice um, and he can double it. Come on, let's get some big hits. Ooh, ooh, my gosh, what is up with my rolling? Okay, we're definitely doing it. <laughs> so we're uh, doubling that to six and we get to recover a charge to give me a break here. Get the fuck out of here, you loser. Oh, we get three more team up. Oh, hold on, there's so much going on. Okay, we'll do this in a second. Recover a charge too. We did get that. Um, oh, and that's right. Doesn't he like double the wild results? Holy crud sickle. Yes, he does. Okay, uh, well, what happened? So this guy died. That's three power up. And we used um, an empowered ability uh, a t a combo. So that's four. Oh, sorry, not power up, team up. Boom. Oh, and then, yeah, baby, we also completed stand as one for another team-up bonus. So we can both empower again. Although Carol hasn't used hers yet, so I guess I don't need to. Okay, and then I get to use this twice. Oh my gosh, I just realized I doubled the number of wilds I roll, which means I actually did four hits on the guy and then doubled it to eight? Are you kidding me, Black Panther? Are you just ridiculous? But yeah, so uh, this. Jeebus, I feel like I'm going to misrepresent this game. It has never been this easy before. Okay, uh, I'm just rolling really well. That'll be definitely be in my roll uh, review. This is a game that has some swinginess. Okay, so I get Strength of Wakanda back for two of the charges, and I heal one, and uh, I'm done. <laughs> and man, am I wacky now to think that everything went so well, I should have Carol like go and punch this guy? Because Black Panther can go into uh, West Africa and solve at least once this turn. Ooh, he can use King of Wakanda to get a reroll. Okay, Carol can go one, uh... Two to Madripoor, three. Sorry, wraps around uh, two, three. Using her supersonic flight to make her move up to four with the basic move, and then she could fight the guy once before resting. Is that worth it? Oh, that's right. She'll get the sword bonus because that's still one of like the basic minions, but then she might just have to run back to Red Skull. Well, whatever. I want her to do something, and she's not very good at defying, so that might be a waste of time. So sure, she will fly up to four. I guess I can barely show it. Sort of one, <laughs> two... Three. Oh, it was four. Actually, I didn't see a water space over there. Meanwhile, T'Challa's doing a basic move to uh, where we can defy. She's going to punch a guy. Uh, she can add a hit if she wants to, and she's rolling four dice. And she gets plus one automatically. Wow. Ooh, speaking of the bonuses, I definitely did not get an extra team up point. So yeah, even better than I thought. All right, four dice, bonus hit automatically, bonus if she throws away. God, man. God, I'm rolling well. Okay, <laughs> he's dead. Because again, uh, one, two, three, plus her bonus for her aspect. And then T'Challa's going to fight against the Sands of Time. Okay, so he's doing King of Wakanda instead of a basic defy. Perform your defy action, you may reroll any number of dice. I'm not going to use Strength of Wakanda. That really seems meant to combo with Vibranium Energy Blades and an Empower to just do massive damage. So he'll just roll three dice with a reroll. Seems decent enough. Although just a note, uh, remember there are only two die faces, one of them double, with the mission symbol or the defined symbol you're looking for. Of course, he would love a wild because <laughs> then he would also get to uh, do that and it would be double successes. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's, oh my gosh, man. Are you kidding me? Okay, so we'll keep that. We'll reroll this. Um, oh my God, what is going on? <laughs> this is not how the game's supposed to go. Okay. Um, <laughs> What did I get? Um, two, three, doubled, four, five. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's great. See, he's already in a single action done five of the six we need. So we're not going to solve it this turn, but man, not for lack of trying. And then um, he gets to resolve base actions twice. And the Iliad counts since it's in green. So wherever it is, you kind of get double options. We don't need to deal damage to anybody, though. So yeah, well, oh, I guess we don't need to empower twice either. So he'll just empower himself. This is some wackiness, y'all. Like, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> okay. But anyway, we're done. Oh, wait, no, we're not. We're not. Jeez. Okay. Carol can, I guess, should I move? And I'd rather get, like, her fast move back. So let's see if we get lucky. We need one success because she gets one automatically. So a single extra success would get her enough to uh, be able to fly around again. At this point, geez, I'm going to say, like, don't roll a success because you're making me look bad. Okay, there we go. There we go. See, resting still sucks. We get uh, just one point. So she's only halfway to supersonic. Okay. All right, now we go to threat. And, gosh, 
It's really just, yeah. No overrun, no enemies alive. <laughs> what is happening? And we are going to have to wait an entire extra round. Ooh, you know, darn it. I just realized you can use these like at any time. So I could have like spent the team up to empower myself, given Black Panther the empowered token immediately, use it to get the extra success on the uh, King of Waka, the, the Defiance check, and then skipped an entire round. Eh, eh I don't want to cheat. It's fine. I'm already doing so stupidly well with roll. Like I definitely do not need to cheat. <laughs> so yeah, let's do another event. And still not the Red Skull unique one, which means that's going to be the next card. I don't know what they are. Uh, preemptive Strike. We have intel on the enemy, but it's encoded. Deciphering these coordinates could give us the advantage of the element of surprise. Um, can you just said give us the element of surprise? <laughs> the first player may test attack. If they roll at least one success, they may cancel one enemy spawn icon on this card. Ooh, cool. And then the first player may move the Iliad to any numbered space. Let's see if we want to do that. Okay, but we can test tech. And uh, so first player, that's T'Challa. He's only got two, although he is empowered. So you could just spend the empowered to automatically succeed, which he doesn't need to because he got it. So we can cancel one enemy spawn. So gosh, we're not going to spawn any enemies. Oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway, uh, you can also move the Iliad to any numbered space. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, we could move it to red since that seems to be where we're fighting Red Skull. We already have... We're fine. It's fine. We don't need to do anything. Okay, so none of those effects. Uh, fireball. Ooh, is Dust of Death. Red Skull's going to actually hurt us. Since he has a token, it's going to be plus one damage. So it's going to be two damage. Um, but then the token goes away. Man, if we weren't magically healing everything that got thrown at us, this might be worrisome. Okay, and then he's the only one who can activate, but he's stunned, so he does nothing. And we skip that spawn. People, I'm really sorry. This is not... <laughs> I mean, I, I don't want to re-record the entire thing, but I've never had the game go anything like this. Uh, we're doing great. This is a good team I picked. <laughs> good rolling. Okay, going to the next round. I mean, this is going to be boring. Because <laughs> we're going to solve that in a second. I guess Carol will like try to get all the way back to Red Skull to punch him. Uh, they can rest, try to get rid of their damage. It's kind of it, right? Jeez, man. Uh, okay, whatever. So Captain Marvel's first. To get back and punch Red Skull, she needs to move a lot. So she'll rest and try to get that and then also heal. She got one plus her one automatic. So let's actually place the action. Uh, so she'll flip this to be able to fly and then heal one. Okay, and then T'Challa might as well uh, defy. So three dice and a free reroll. Oh, that wasn't good. Uh, let's try that again. Okay, we see, here we go. That was a bad roll, but one's all we needed. To get sands of time to be ready. So we do have to wait until the uh, next round to be actually able to do anything with it. Yeah, now I really wish that I had uh, <laughs> done the empowered to get the next one out. Okay, now Carol's gonna fly high. Uh, so that gets her four move, right? Actually, that's not enough. Well, it's fine. She'll do her boosted move to move five, and then she'll do a damage to Red Skull when she goes into his space. Yeah, and that gets us there. And then T'Challa. I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> he'll uh, do something. I guess maybe he'll move to Atlantis for one. Okay, and then she'll punch Red Skull with four dice and, you know, lots of other stuff. And he's already got a damage from her power. <sighs> Gosh, okay, bye. You're, you're stunned again. Are we surprised? T'Challa's got two actions left. I think he'll just heal his two damage. Carol's going to rest and try to heal and or get that back. And that's one. So that's two recovery. And she'll leave the damage. She's got energy absorption and just get supersonic flight. And then, dude, I literally, <laughs> I literally don't know what to do. We're all, ah, oh, this is dumb. Um, I don't know. I guess I will. Sure. He will rest. Or he could move. Like, maybe we want to move somewhere. I don't know. Actually, sure. He'll do his, like, boosted move. Uh, so he'll let Carol move here, because probably Red Skull is going to move there, and then she can just punch him again. And then he can move up to three, since it's boosted. I don't know. He'll be in Wakanda, be kind of central over in that area. All right. Threat advances by a poultry two. But hey, we get something new. Here we go. All right. Uh, serum destroyed. When Red Skull activates during the final showdown, he moves one fewer space. So this is going to help us when we fight him in the end. Destroying the serum has given you the upper hand in the fight against Red Skull's genius intellect. And this gets slotted up here. Let's see what the negative would have been. During the final showdown, ooh, his power is plus one. <laughs> that would have been bad. And you'll know that when it goes in, there is a side mission uh, icon. So you always add one. And what we got? Fury's Fury. <laughs> Ooh, defy this mission on the Iliad. Uh, Black Panther is close. We need four successes. I burned worlds, destabilized galaxies, dethroned gods, and I did it without any of them even knowing my name. Nick Fury. All right, so if we don't, then the threat is going to go up by two. So I guess Fury is just kind of secret roaring it up and getting pissed off. The threat goes back to zero. Let's see what our new mission is. We have a 14 threshold again. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Place one damage on this mission for each damage dealt to Red Skull and for each damage dealt by Red Skull? All right. 
Ooh, while this mission is active, increase Red Skull's power by one, which would certainly matter if he ever was not stunned. <laughs> I have a new dream, a new vision. Freedom must feel fear, and fear leads to control. Uh, yeah, and we got into a 14 threat. I don't feel like that's going to happen, but hey, we are going to finally draw Red Skull's uh, unique first event. Let's see what it does. Reap fear. It's looking dire, but we cannot give up the fight. Red Skull must not prevail. Place one progress token on the Nemesis sheet for each overrun base, which is zero. Oh, God, he doesn't even do any of his cool stuff because we don't have any of those powers. Um, we do add another side mission, and then enemies active. Oh, and there's no spawn? <laughs> Come on, game. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. All right, so another side mission, though. The Gathering Storm. Uh, defy this mission on any base. Okay. Otherwise, threat by one. The base is a flurry of activity with agents and support staff hurrying to and fro. Something big is happening out there. So a lot of things to defy, but the only thing to punch is Red Skull himself. And he's stunned, so he's not even moving. He didn't even, like, do anything. So me moving Carol was actually a mistake. Whoops. Oh, let's not forget. So we can do the Fury one on the Iliad. We can do Gathering Storm on the Iliad, too, because it's on any base. And then Fearsome Visage is just punching Red Skull. So Black Panther is, like, free to just defy up the wazoo here. All right, now Black Panther's first. So let's, um, let's go and do the Gathering Storm where I am. Or no. Let's do his boosted move. It'll move him up to three and then uh, Captain Marvel one because then he can get to the Iliad where he can do either mission and then she can get here where she can punch to do her mission. And then, yeah, I guess if she can just do eight damage, <laughs> even though that'll be more than enough to stun him. Yeah, let's let's do her super fight. So that means that she's hitting on tactics and regular hits and she's still rolling four dice from sword. We have a lot of team ups. Should we just go ahead and use Alpha Flight? How about it? He's the only enemy. It's only now. I'm not going to waste it to give just a single <laughs> plus one damage to one guy. All right, here we go. Uh, oh my gosh, that was really good. <laughs> one, two, three, four because of her power. Uh, five because of her aspect. Six. Is that right? Three, four, five, six. Yeah. And she gets resolved. The New York ability to gain one team up from the uh, lightning bolt, which means we're ready to double activate our team ups again if we need to. Okay, so he's got six and he's stunned. And Fearsome Visage has six, so she's just going to punch him again. Because, again, you can hit him more than his uh, value if you want to. Oh, what are these from? I guess the last time. All right, Black Panther, can you do as good as that? Uh, we're going to do Strength of Wakanda, King of Wakanda, which means we're going to defy for four. Um, and we can reroll any number of dice, and we can always add a success here. And for this, we're trying to defy Fury's Fury, because that increases threat more than the Gathering Storm. All right, so four dice, one reroll. Let's see how we do... Pretty darn good. It's already two. None of the doubles, no wilds. And, ah, okay. That was like a normal roll. That was not too bad. <laughs> not great either, then I'm okay with that. So we only get two success. I could spend my empower for third, but whatever. We'll see how the next roll goes. Okay, and then Carol. Um, I guess she'll just fight again, right? Only needs two damage to complete the quest. Oh, gosh. It's another team up for free. It puts us to nine. And then she's got one, two, three, plus one for her aspect. Dude, for real, bring on, like, the T-Rex. We can beat him, too. So that's ten total, which, yeah, I think is quite a bit more than we need for that. Okay, T'Challa's gonna defy again. And no boost this time, no re-rolls. Just a single one. I will go in and use his Empowered uh, to get the fourth one. So that completes Fury's Fury and gets us two more team up. And I guess Carol will... I don't know, man. Uh... She could, I guess, rest. At least heal her one damage. Sure. And we don't have to roll because it's automatic. Well, I guess, oh, that's right. We should roll because we might get lightning bolts. I forgot that the last time. Nope. So she just heals one. That's from her automatic success. And then what should Black Panther do? Um, I guess I'll keep on trying to complete the missions. Get rid of the Gathering Storm. I mean, it's not going to happen this time. Oh, wow. Nothing. Yeah, see? So that's how the game sometimes goes. <laughs> I didn't roll any of the uh, mission success uh, symbols. That's good. It's a super minor one, plus one threat a turn we can easily deal with. And then Carol has one action left. Again, I think it's more likely he'll move up towards Atlantis, so she'll do a basic move. All right, and threat advances by two, plus one from the mission, and that's literally it. And then we have already beat his second mission. I feel like we got to put him out of his misery. Okay, nothing to fear. You have defied Red Skull's attempts to frighten you into submission and now stand together with courage. Place one suppression token on the Nemesis sheet. So these have a different uh, use in each battle, but in some way Red Skull's going to be weaker in the fight. But it does spawn a new mission. Oh, Enchantress. Okay, so five, uh, two. Here's within two spaces of Enchantress. Cannot perform defy actions. 
Enchantress has impressive powers of illusion, hypnosis, and transmutation, among others. And she's ooh, she's on space ten, which means she's definitely within uh, <laughs> within two of T'Challa. All right. And what's our last mission before we put this guy down? Race against time. The hour of destiny approaches. Okay, defy this mission on an operational base, uh, which are all operational right now. Do place one progress token on that base for each success. When a base has one times the number of players progress tokens, that base is protected. Okay, cool. And then if threat is nine or higher when checking mission progress, this we just have to wait. Uh, flip this card and place one progress on it for each protected base. If there's three or more progress on this card, the mission passes. Okay, so we need to just move around to the bases and protect them. I'm assuming bad things will happen or good things will happen. Um, okay, cool. So a little bit different. That's fun. Although Enchantress is still going to mess with us being able to actually do that. But either way, let's see. We've got one shot. Gather your forces and prepare to go on the offensive. Hold nothing back. Okay, so each hero tests attack and advance team up by the number of successes. <laughs> hey, why not? Yeah, a lot of the events are also like negative. We're getting lucky there. Okay, um, so this will be, I guess, T'Challa's first at the moment. Oh, and he got two, right? So that's team up goes to 13. Ooh, and... <laughs> okay, so he's going to empower himself for one of his wilds and then he could weaken enchantress for the other or oh does deal a damage to her i guess that's kind of the same thing so boop all right and then carol uh got none okay, and then let's see um none of those at the moment still uh but we are doing his bomb which is where he advances that was good this worked out uh so he moves up and he gets a progress because he didn't uh conquer a base yet okay and then activation she's coming to t'challa well, mainly because she's coming to the closest bases. And Red Skull has been perpetually punched by <laughs> Captain Marvel for the entire game. Oh, it's so funny. But then, hey, we're finally getting a spawn. Oh, level two guy. T-Rex. Where are you, buddy? Uh, Chitauri Soldier. Five life, two attack. And ooh, when each time it activates, it deals one damage to the nearby hero. See, that's interesting. By the way, to reiterate, I really like the game. It's just that I'm getting stupidly lucky. Like, <laughs> the game is still fun regardless. But this has been, like, the least tense of the plays I've had. All right, so here we go. Going into the next round. Captain Marvel's about to punch Red Skull. We need to start doing defy actions on bases, but we can't until Enchantress is defeated. Then way over in the corner, pretty far from any base, um, is this Chitari soldier. And honestly, I kind of want to leave him alive because I want uh, the threat to advance faster, you know, once I get the three bases uh, protected because we need to get it to nine. And Captain Marvel's first again. Um... She's got to punch Red Skull. I somehow, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to need the base. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, let's do Alpha Flight and prime every enemy now that we have three of them. Because our team up track is like absurd over here. So now we're down to nine. And Red Skull, Enchantress, and the Chitauri will get plus one damage if we want. All right, and then she's going to punch the guy. Um, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, plus one from her aspect six. Uh, I guess she doesn't even need to use that, right? I think that's a choice. So yeah, she'll leave it on him. But he's stunned again. Push him away from a base again. And she's free and clear. And then for T'Challa, I think for his first attack, he'll do a basic move. She can get him two, because he can't uh, defy the Iliad with Enchantress so near. He'll go to, whatever, New York. Okay, and speaking of Enchantress, let's kill her. Uh, <laughs> so Captain Marvel will do a supersonic flight. Uh, use her power to go up to four with a basic move. There we go. And T'Challa's going to try to fix... Uh, to uh, protect New York. He's going to defy. Actually, you know what? I'll switch out to King of Wakanda so he gets a reroll. Whoops. Uh, ooh, okay. Well, that... Is that enough? We need to do... Yeah, uh, two well, number of players. So actually, the wild does it, and we get two team up. Wow. All right, so we put... Okay, so yeah, we put the number... There we go. So that is protected. We need to get three more bases before uh, threat goes too high. Okay, meanwhile... Uh, I don't know. Let's go in and do a super fight on this... Uh, who is it? On uh, the Enchantress. So she is not um, Red Skull or one of his minions. So I'm only getting three attack. Wah, wah. <laughs> but she still has plus one attack. I still get an automatic hit for my aspect. <laughs> okay. Yep, you're gone. <laughs> Didn't even need to use your token. That gets us three more. All right. Oh, and actually, free interrupt works out well, because now I can do his... Uh, boosted move to move him up to three and her up to one so we'll send him to atlantis and her to uh, wakanda i guess because then her last action can be to try to protect wakanda she only got two dice and no uh, bonuses but uh if she gets at least one success her empowered can finish it nope okay there we go <laughs> so uh she got nothing and then t'challa will uh, use his last action for a basic defy as well oh there we go two so he's good to go 
And it's fine. She can try again later because uh, we have to wait until the threat advances enough anyway. And speaking of threat, uh, we haven't defeated the Gathering Storm. That's plus one. And then we have one extra enemy on the board. So it's four. So we want to kind of like leave all that and maybe even let one more bad thing stay around to uh, <laughs> get to the final fight next round. And yeah, the mission has not been completed yet. And we go to the event. Uh, here's another one of him. Hydra Born. Red Skull has breached the Helicarrier. Shield operatives are fighting him off, but they could use backup. Oh, gosh. Move Red Skull directly to the Iliad. Well, hello there. Good thing you're stunned. Although, okay, never mind. That makes sense. They wouldn't uh, want to use his, like, automatically overrun ability. So because he's stunned, he's not going to overrun it. <laughs> and he is going to poison us, though. So we each take two, and he gets rid of this. We're both unhurt, so that's not a big deal. Okay, and then enemies activate. These guys are one away from Madripoor. Red Skull's stunned, so he doesn't do anything. And we get another uh, Exo Soldier out on Space 2. And I'm specifically not going to beat him up <laughs> because um, I want the mission to advance more. I see, I've given you a fuller picture of things. Uh, if Carol wants to punch Red Skull again, she has to go up to the Iliad, but then she can also try to defend it. So can T'Challa. Um, we got enemies over here and over here. Now that one's about to conquer a base, and I don't want to kill them. I don't want to solve the Gathering Storm because I want Threat to advance a little bit faster. So basically, I just want to protect one city this turn, boost up all my stuff to fight Red Skull, and punch him once so he still doesn't uh, conquer the Iliad. All right, so Black Panther's first. And I'm pretty sure, like, the guys usually teleport somewhere when they uh, flip, but whatever. Let's go ahead and go to the Iliad. And Captain Barvel will use her boosted move to do the same and then do one damage to Red Skull. And then Black Panther's going to do King of Wakanda to have a reroll on his uh, roll to uh, fix the Iliad or protect it. And... We got one. Oh, she can reroll. That's right, because he did, did uh, King of Wakanda. Still only one. Yeah, I could use his empowered, but whatever. We got a lot of action, so <laughs> he'll just take it. Okay, and then Carol's going to fight him uh, with four dice and all that stuff. He's already got three uh, damage. Or sorry, one damage. Ooh, nice. So the Iliad can do one damage. Um, and then one. So yeah, that'll be one, two. Oh, plus her aspect. She already stunned him. With a lightning bolt, she'll use the Iliad to do one damage here. And yeah, she'll push Red Skull, I don't know, how about over here, next to like 50 bases? <laughs> oh no, actually, let's push him over here near Wakanda in case like it matters and we need to stop him from overrunning it or something. All right, T'Challa's, should he defy or rest like twice? I guess he'll, uh, I think I'll have him rest first. And I will empower a hero afterwards. I think he can use his empower and then immediately get it back. All right, so he's looking for that tack symbol. That's none of them. But he gets one free success, and he will throw this away, and he'll just heal himself. Well, actually, let's get the strength of Wakanda, and then, yeah, he'll use the boost to get that right back. Captain Marvel will also rest, I guess. Uh, oh, there's one, so she gets two. She's not going to use her empower, and she'll... Yeah, she'll get flight in case, like, Red Skull teleports somewhere far away. Okay, and then one of us needs to defy, so uh, T'Challa will defy. Well, you know, I'm just realizing, I guess I could have done, like, four bases instead of just three. Okay, he got two defiance. Cool. But yeah, I could have uh, gotten more than just the three. I don't know if it'll matter at all. Oh, uh, what happened to Red Skull? Oh, he moved away, and we did, definitely didn't need the extra damage. And then, yeah, Carol's going to rest again. Seems to make the most sense. Uh, oh, my gosh, three. Well, she's fully healed. Good job. And right, here we go, the big moment. So we're advancing threat. Uh, two, three, four, and then the other enemy, five. Just what I wanted. Awesome. Let me check this. If threat is higher, uh, nine or higher, we flip this, and we're getting one progress for each protected base. So we have three. The ritual is cracked. At the start of the final showdown, Red Skull suffers one times the number of players' damage for each progress token. So he's going to have six damage right off the bat. Your efforts prove successful, and Red Skull is thwarted. His ritual falls to pieces around him as he cries out in dismay. No! Oh, but I'm dumb. I just realized all this stuff gets discarded. Just the uh, that one stays. But he does get six more damage. All right, final showdown. Let's see. So he's got 12 life, so he's already half dead. That doesn't bode well for him. Okay, at the start of the... Oh. And now a toast to unending conquest! The start of the final showdown, discard all progress tokens from the sheet. And we suffer damage equal to the number of tokens discarded, which were none. Okay, and now anytime he would do his, like, dust or conquering places effect, he just advances threat by two. When he activates, he moves two towards the nearest base, and then attacks each here in his space and overruns a sp base in his space. Jeez. Then the Red Skull recovers 3,000 of our player's damage, but he covers one less for each uh, suppression token on this sheet. Uh, so he's going to heal four when he activates. So by six damage, <laughs> is it too special here? Is it? Because um, he's not stunned anymore. But suppression. If you're in a space that matches an enemy spawn icon on the top card of the event discard pile, place one suppression token on the sheet. So we could stop his healing 
But gosh, I just feel like we're going to be able to kill him, right? Okay, so yeah, he has six for the moment, but he's about to heal four of it. So we'll have 10 left to do in uh, one turn if we just want to wipe the board with him. Oh, is he not going anywhere? Yeah, Loki like teleported all over the place. He's just where he is. And he's going to charge towards us and take over a base. All right. All right but let's draw the actual event. Homecoming. Wakanda is graciously offered to grant us assistance in our time of need. Oh my gosh. Up to two heroes may move to Wakanda and they may recover two or charge three. Yeah, let's do it. Because yeah, he's going to come right uh, towards us <laughs> since it's equidistant. Hurt us and stuff, but then we'll just be ready to punch and punch and punch. And only T'Challa can benefit from the recover and charge. He'll heal fully. Okay, threat's down to zero now, but we lose if it reaches 20, and this icon just means that it advances two. Okay, the enemies are going to activate. All right, so this guy charges towards Carol, who's right over there in Wakanda. Remember, that's his special text. This guy goes into Madripoor. Okay, and then Red Skull does his special thing. So he comes here, he overruns Wakanda, which means we can't benefit from rolling, rolling uh, lightning bolts for it anymore, although we can still use the Iliad to deal damage, which is what we want anyway. And he attacks each of us for three. Like, whoa, dude. And then he recovers four damage. So yeah, I mean, this is nasty. Good thing uh, that we're just going to kill him, I think. And one of his exo armors goes on space two. That's where the other one was. So yeah, we could have, uh, if we wanted to like cancel its healing more, we could go to one or two. Those were on the space. Or sorry, not on the space, on the card. Or to South Asia. But I mean, I don't know, 10 more damage? I feel like <laughs> Captain Marvel has done that in without like even breaking a sweat. Well, but let's test that hypothesis with a boosted attack. Yeah, actually, who knows? Uh, T'Challa's like crazy doubling effect might be the winner here. So she's got an automatic damage from her aspect, four dice, and <laughs> plus one damage from that. And uh, sorry, my throat. <laughs> and uh, her empowered. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Two, four, five, plus one, six. Let's spend this seven. Let's spend this eight. Yeah, where's your impressive healing now, buddy? Captain Marvel is easy mode. <laughs> oh, wait, where was I? Um, so he has two life left. Right, just enough to Chala. Strike the, strike the final blow, buddy. I don't even care. Use your boost. Who cares? You're going to boost. All right, so we are using Strength of Wakanda. He's got it empowered. So he's rolling for attack. Um, and he can double the fight action afterwards. And hey, you know what? We got a billion <laughs> team up points. So let's spend four to activate Alpha Flight. And there we go. Uh, boop. Unitas checked. When you discard the Prime, do you add a success to the roll? Which means I think he'll double that too. <laughs> All right, let's see how much you can do, T'Challa. Go! Well, that was a terrible roll. I mean, not that terrible, though. Look, two, uh, three, and then this double six. All right, so Red Skull is skullified. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. This was, wow. Again, this is my third play of the game. Uh, the first game we lost. The second game we literally won on the very last turn. It was like neck and neck. And this is now this is my first time against Red Skull, but also just what good luck throughout. Anyway, that was uh, Marvel Dagger. I'm going to play a bunch more. Uh, try the uh, two uh, the nemeses that I've not played against yet, Ultron and uh, Thanos. And I'll try some more of the heroes. And then I'll be doing a review in a week or two after I... Uh, uh, work around with the system a bit more but thanks for watching everybody again this is not representative of my plays of the game at all but hopefully it was still fun hopefully you guys at least got to see like how the core mechanics work and kind of the you know fights and moving around and missions and all that kind of stuff hope it was at least fun uh, good gaming and i'll see you at the next stop